Good afternoon, Granite State families. We are here to take a few moments to talk about all the courses that we have to offer for incoming students and um, students that are already at Granite State Arts Academy. And to also take a minute to introduce all our staff members so that you can kind of put a name with a face. Um, I am Mrs. Karen and I am the guidance counselor slash head of school. So I'll be working with students for the next four years, going over plans about um, where, where you start and where you end at Granite State Arts Academy. Um, in most schools, there are prerequisites for classes, and we go by the state standards. And um, Mrs. Friend will put up the state standards that we go by for all your students to graduate at Granite State Arts Academy. So in order to graduate Granite State Arts Academy, you need to have a total of 26 credits, um, and they're in various places. You need to have at least six art credits, um, four years of English, three years of math, three years of social studies, two years of science, a half a credit of health, and a full credit of PE, and six and a half credits of electives. Now, in each of those, there are specific classes that you need to take. Um, you need to have English 9, English 10, English 11, and English 12. You need to have a physical science and a biological science. Um, so over the course of the next four years, I will sit with your students and make sure that all those requirements are covered. Um, I am now going to pass it over to Mr. McGarry, and he will talk a little bit about your English 9 and 10 classes. Hello. Hi, I'm James McGarry. Uh, I am the uh, English teacher for underclassmen here at Granite State Arts Academy. So um, uh, English 9 is genres of literature and composition. Uh, and that is a course around looking at all different kinds of texts and um, seeing, you know, uh, what the different genre moves are within each text. So we're going to be looking at fiction, nonfiction, poetry, plays. We've got some really excellent texts on the list that year. We're doing uh, The Book Thief, Macbeth, To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, and we're going to be looking at the different kinds of things that authors are doing in those texts. And then we're going to be applying that to our own writing as well. So we're going to be writing plenty of essays, of course, but also uh, short stories, also poetry. Uh, English 10 uh, is world literature, and my motto in world literature is, uh, if you can read this, you can read anything. So we do tend to read uh, slightly more challenging texts in English 10. We do some, uh, some old English, some middle English. We do a little bit more Shakespeare. We're also reading other texts from all over the world. Uh, and our goal there is not only to um, get familiar with different kinds of language, but uh, different kinds of cultural ideas and how those inform uh, different kinds of stories. And we'll be talking about the ways that those uh, cultural ideas have uh, relevance to us today. Uh, so I'm going to throw now to uh, Lisa Peterson, who is the upperclassman English teacher. Hi, my name is Lisa Peterson, and I'm the head of the humanities department here at Granite State Arts Academy. I also teach upper level, upper, upper level English courses, as well as a mythology course and two social science courses. For English 11, the focus is on American literature, so we do such books as The Crucible by Arthur Miller, Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, as well as some Edgar Allan Poe. It is my hope that we will be able to finally return to our annual field trip to Salem, Mass, hoping to go there to the Salem Witch Museum and the House of Seven Gables, because each unit I do always includes a background piece on a specifically chosen text. Part of the Eng English 11 program includes a junior honors portion where we focus on one book, one project and one essay per quarter. Part of that portion does include a piece of student input in the text that we read in that we could do such books as The Color Purple by Alice Walker, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, or even The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. For English 12, the focus is a balance of, <clears throat> excuse me, fiction and nonfiction. We also do write the college essay uh, through English 12. We may do such texts as Into Thin Air by John Krakauer or The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. Part of the English 12 program is an English composition dual enrollment class with NHTI and Concord, where students can earn one credit of English for their freshman year of college and their English 12 credit at the same time. The cost of this course is $150 paid to NHTI. 
For mythology, we focus on the hero's journey, and the assessment for that is to see how it fits into the modern superhero story. We may watch Black Panther or Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse to practice mapping out that journey. We also study various cultures and mythology, as well as legends from all over the world. This does include a short unit on urban legends as well that ends with students writing their own urban legend. I teach both sociology and psychology, and both courses are introduction to the foundations of each social science. Students write research papers in APA style, specifically with sociology. Students write a paper on a serial killer with a focus on nature versus nurture. And for psychology, the paper is on a famous psychologist and their contributions excuse me, to their field. I'm also the GSA club advisor for our school. Thank you, and I will now pass it on to Mr. Richard Davis. Hi, I'm Rich Davis. I am the lead teacher in the math department. Um, we, offer the, we offer the following traditional math courses, pre-algebra, algebra, geometry, algebra two and pre-calculus. And we have several tracks set up depending on the level of the student. They could either start off in pre-algebra, they could start off in algebra, geometry, and even possibly algebra two. Um, we have also recently added an honors track um, to better prepare our students for pre-calculus and beyond. Um, we also offer a consumer math class. Um, this course follows the curriculum of Dave Ramsey's Foundations in Personal Finance. We offer such topics as personal finance, um, savings, budgeting, debt, consumer awareness, um, investing in retirement, careers, and taxes. At this point, I'd like to move it on to Katrina Wiesner. Hi, my name is Katrina Wiesner. I'm the science teacher here at GSAA. Um, we're currently offering four courses for next year in science. Our first class is a freshman course in integrated science, which goes over an intro to physical science, including both chemistry and physics. Our sophomore class is the biology course, which covers cell bio, biochemistry, energy flow through ecosystems, genetics, heredity, evolution, and ecology. Um, one of our elective courses that we offer for upperclassmen is chemistry. This is the study of matter, composition of matter, structure of matter, categorization of matter, the atomic theory, causes, and signs of chemical reactions. And a new uh, elective that we're offering next year is environmental science. Um, this course will cover earth systems and resources, populations, land and water use, energy resources and consumption, pollution, global change, and environmental research. In all science classes, we will use a combination of lecture, discussions, videos, independent work, lab work, and projects um, for the students to learn. I will assess students via a combination of tests, quizzes, and projects, and I try to integrate arts into the curriculum as much as possible in terms of our discussions and projects that we do. I'd now like to pass um, this off to Andrew Moikowski, who is our social studies teacher here. Hi guys, uh, my name is Andrew Moikowski. I'm the teacher for all of the core uh, social studies classes uh, here at GSAA. Uh, so you'll be seeing me for basically your first three years here. Um, freshman classes offered are geography and world history. I mean, obviously geography, we're studying uh, not just the location of places around the world, but I mean, climate, uh, ecology, we're studying uh, culture as well. Uh, world history, we'll be studying anywhere from the uh, early uh, River Valley uh, civilizations, probably through uh, to the Renaissance period. Uh, sophomore year, uh, we offer uh, civics and uh, economics. Um, civics, again, we will be doing uh, the structure of government, things like that. We also try to incorporate as much as uh, your, you know, as much as we can, your role uh, in the government, uh, your responsibilities as a citizen, that sort of thing. Uh, and we'll be uh, taking obviously the citizenship test uh, from this point on as required by the state. Um, in economics, uh, we'll be talking about the basics, uh, of economics, you know, how our system works, that sort of thing. Uh, we will also get into the functions of the stock market. 
um, as well as a little bit of tax preparation. Uh, the junior year class is a one year uh, full year class uh, in United States history. Uh, which is kind of self-explanatory. We will start obviously with colonial period and try to work our way up as close to the current day as we can. Um, and um, well, I think that's about it. Um, I'm gonna pass it on now to Ms. Uh, Mrs. Sherry Callahan. Hola a todos y bienvenidos a nuestra escuela. Mi nombre es la señora Callahan y yo enseño español uno, dos y tres. Hello to everyone and welcome to our school. My name is Mrs. Sherry Callahan and I teach Spanish one, two and three. In the Spanish courses here at GSAA, you can expect to have a lot of fun learning the Spanish language. You'll not only learn the language, but you'll also learn all of the Spanish speaking countries and a lot about their cultures and holidays. Dance, theater, music, visual arts, and creative writing are a big part of our school, and they're infused into the Spanish curriculum. Get ready to make clay sculptures, calaveras, ataudes, y las catrinas, paint on canvas, pintura sobre lienzo, and make paper marigolds, sempasuchil de papel. You'll learn how to tango and cha-cha, just to name a couple of the dances you'll learn when we partner up with our dance department. You'll learn many popular holiday songs, Biancicos, Canciones de Navidad in Spanish, along with many others from artists like Mark Anthony and his Vivir Mi Vida, my personal favorite, to songs for curriculum pieces like Weather, Time, and Dia de los Muertos. Something that's really special for the Spanish courses is that we end our school year uh, with the students having a performance piece in each course. For example, Spanish 1 makes product commercials. Spanish 2 creates and films a travel agency advertisement for various Spanish-speaking countries. And Spanish 3 creates, um, excuse me, a performance piece including writing a full script and then performing and filming it. Um, it's no easy feat. We start working on it at the beginning of the school year. In the past, they've created pieces such as soap operas, time travel, and murder mysteries, telenovas, el viaje en el tiempo, policiales, the entire process is so much fun, and it's amazing how much of the Spanish language students learn and acquire year to year to year. In Spanish 1, we build the foundation. In Spanish 2, we focus a lot on a lot of new content and grammatical structure and rules. In Spanish 3, we learn higher level skills and new verb tenses. In closing, I hope to see you all in August. Nos vemos en agosto. Adios. Uh, I also teach PE. Uh, you may be asking yourself, what is PE like at GSAA? Um, I'm sure when you watched the virtual tour or visited our school, you may have noticed there's no gymnasium in the building. We don't have a gym, but that doesn't affect us in any way, shape, or form. We use our cafeteria, the front lawn outside, the pavement down to the main road, and even sometimes the classroom, and in years past, the theater, too. PE consists of a warm-up and stretch and exercise routine, and then we move on to our activity of the day, week, or weeks. Depending on what unit we're doing, the time can vary. Uh, you can expect to play hockey. Because we're indoors, we work with inflatables for our hockey matches. Believe it or not, it takes more effort and energy when working with the inflatables than a regular game of street hockey. We also play soccer, ultimate frisbee, kickball, flag football, badminton, table tennis. We do lightweight training, practice yoga, mile walking, learn fencing techniques, Whipple ball baseball, volleyball, 
I even do a martial arts Taekwondo unit um, with all the students uh, at the end of the school year. We even work on topics like what counts as physical activities, barriers to physical activity and ways to overcome them. I think you'll find our PE is a lot of fun. You can see you have a wonderful opportunity to try out different types of physical activities. You get a lot of exposure in the PE course and the hope is that you'll find something you like and connect with and maybe it becomes your personal physical activity of choice when you're finished the course. Remember, teens are supposed to get 60 minutes of physical activity a day. In the PE course, the daily PE grade is comprised of participation, movement, conduct and safety, and preparation. I can't wait to exercise and play with you. Yes, play. I've been known to jump in and play if we have uneven numbers. Um, I also teach health. Um, I like to say to everyone, the health course at GSA is not your typical health course. Uh, where else can you do a fingerprint cartoon strip to demonstrate refusal skills? Or how about a mock jury trial for drunk driving? Or a drunk driving simulation? How about veggie art during nutrition or making your own homemade deodorant for a personal care unit? Those are just a few of my favorite examples of how artsy the health course is. You can expect to add to your knowledge of vaping, the health triangle, tobacco, alcohol, taking keys, prescription drugs, club drugs, street drugs, dependence versus addiction, marijuana, sex ed, HIV, quitting substances, violence prevention, mental and emotional health, nutrition, and personal care. There's a very strong emphasis on the health skills and you'll learn various models for decision-making and refusal skills. You'll sharpen your interpersonal communication abilities as well as self-advocacy and awareness to health advocacy for others. You'll gain strategies for keeping yourself risk-free and having healthy behavioral outcomes in various situations and your day-to-day. -day. You'll also learn how to achieve total health and wellness and how to balance your health triangle. I always say to my health students that high school health is a blip on the radar screen, but what I love about it is about that is that you get this moment in time to take an introspective look at how healthy you are and how you can improve your overall health and wellness, as well as develop lifelong skills. I look forward to working with you on your health. I will see you in the fall. And now I turn it over to our fabulous dance teacher, Mrs. McMahon. Thank you, Mrs. Callahan. Hi, everyone. I'm Jenna McMahon, and I am the dance teacher here at Granite State Arts Academy. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our program. So an overview, we have um, introduction through advanced levels of dance. And in those classes, um, we do classical ballet, jazz, and modern every week. And there's also ample opportunity for students to do student choreography. So you make your own dances that are performed in the student showcase at the end of each semester. Along with those classes, we also offer world dance, dance history, and dance pedagogy. Um, world dance studies some of the different various cultures from around the world, and we kind of delve a little bit deeper into what dance means to that culture. And then we pick one dance from one of those cultures and learn it to perform in the show at the end of the semester. Um, dance history is talking about dance from prehistoric times up through current times and how the events of um, the time affect dance and how dance affects what's going on and how it all relates. Um, and then we have dance pedagogy and our dance pedagogy class, um, students can learn how to teach basically. So you learn about a little bit, we touch on child development, we touch on um, anatomy and physiology and also injury prevention. So those are some of the uh, classes that we do. I also wanted to mention that we have a dance club that is student run and it's pretty cool because they normally do the more um, fun dances, the hip hop dances that 
I don't do anymore. Um, so that's a good thing. We also have the National Honor Society for Dance Arts, which you can be inducted into as a junior or a senior if you have good academic standing and are involved in the dance program. And one more thing to mention is that I'm also the advisor to the National Honor Society here at Granite State Arts Academy. So you can direct questions about that to me. So that's just a little bit about our dance program here at Granite State Arts Academy. And one more thing, you don't have to be a dancer to be a part of the program. Everyone's a dancer, so just come join and have some fun. I'd now like to um, introduce Mr. Hudgens of our music department. Thanks, Jenna. Uh, my name is Jake Hudgens. I am the director of the music department here at GSAA. And um, I think this program has something for everyone, whether you are uh, you consider yourself a serious musician, um, if you've never picked up an instrument or sang a tune in your life, or if you're somewhere in the middle. Um, if you are a performer, um, we offer uh, two core ensembles. We have the chorus, where we sing traditional choral music, yes, but also um, we've done popular music in the past. We just uh, finished a Stevie Wonder tune. Um, we're currently working on some film music from a Studio Ghibli movie. Um, and we also learn about vocal pedagogy and uh, vocal health. Um, our band program is open to all instruments, not just winds, strings, percussion. Um, if you play uh, the keyboard, if you play the ukulele, um, all are welcome there. Um, and again, we touch on a variety of genres. Um, we've done salsa, jazz, and pop in the last year, and we look to do more as we move forward. Um, if you are a novice, at, uh, musical novice. We have an intro class where we do a brief survey through music history, listening skills, some basic performance techniques. Um, we're also, for the first time, offering beginning guitar and ukulele classes next semester, um, which is uh, really wonderful and I think going to be a, a great um, way for a lot of people to try something new in the arts. Um, if you're more interested in the academic side of things, uh, we offer a history of rock course, um, where we basically look at um, Western pop music from the 20th century um, from both a musical perspective as well as a um, uh, poetic and a societal perspective. Um, we try to look at it within the greater context of uh, what's been going on there uh, in terms of like uh, social development, um, trends in America, all of these things. Um, and for advanced students, we have um, Rock Ensemble, which is a student-led course uh, where students can uh, break down into smaller groups and perform um, tunes that they pick with their uh, their group mates. Um, and we focus on things like performing skills, self-sufficiency, um, setting up your own gear, um, all the things that you would need if you were going to take your group to a real gig and uh, play for a crowd. Uh, we also offer audio courses um, where we talk about acoustics, we talk about how to get yourself going as a recording artist, um, use music recording software, um, we create podcasts, we, rec we create um, short pieces of music, uh, which uses the uh, studio that we have here at GSAA. Um, we have um, three studio rooms and a control room with um, some pretty pretty solid uh, audio equipment that we use to create records. Um, and finally, um, we're looking to offer a digital music course for students who are interested in creating narratives um, and music uh, all with the, uh, the computer. So hopefully uh, something for you in there. Um, we try to kind of cover everything that we can. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Pelletier now from the theater department. Hi. I'm Dan Pelletier. I am the theater teacher at Grand State Arts Academy. Very excited to have an incoming crop of new students. We have a plethora of opportunities for people of all uh, theater experience and backgrounds, uh, both during school and after school. So our introductory courses include intro to theater, uh, as well as a stagecraft and technical theater course. And both of those require zero experience um, but if you come with some experience, even better. Um, after that, we build on those skills in such classes as our advanced acting classes, as well as designing for theater uh, and advanced technical courses. Uh, 
Um, will you also offer a rotating variety of special topics in theaters classes, such as Shakespeare, acting for the camera, acting for musical theater, stage combat, improv, physical comedy, all different sorts of things like that. Um, so as you progress, there'll always be classes you can take, and some of the advanced classes you're even welcome to take multiple times because you can always use the practice. Uh, we also do have a couple of historical perspectives, uh, so the history of theater, where we look at uh, anywhere from six to eight different important eras and read a play from each one of those and really try to understand the culture and the development of the arts, as well as a theater, uh, an exploring musical theater class where we look at the history of the greatest American art form, and that is musical theater. Uh, for our upperclassmen, there are some independent study opportunities that I'd love to help develop that if you know have a certain passion for one area of the theatrical arts, we can find a way to really expand your knowledge and experience in that. After school, we do have our drama club where we put on two productions a year, both a uh, play and a musical, as well as a number of side projects and some workshops and things for maybe people that might not be able to fit a theater class into their schedule for the year. We try to be accommodating. So uh, whether you're a seasoned thespian or you have never stepped on stage before, we've got something for you in the theater department. Uh, it is the art where we can find uh, something for everybody to do. And I hope I see you uh, in the Performing Arts Center uh, coming this fall. I'm now gonna pass it over to Mr. Charlo. Hello, I'm Frank Charlo. I'm the co-director of, director of school as well as one of two visual arts teachers at Granite State Arts Academy. The visual arts curriculum begins with fundamentals of art. This is your foundational course and it's prerequisite for many other courses. And in this course, we focus on as many art making methods and materials as time allows. Um, I, we try to do at least one project in each media uh, to prepare students for the upper level, upper level courses. Some of the, the things that we do are um, a drawing unit using graphite and charcoal, a painting unit with watercolor and acrylics. We do a little bit of sculpture, a little bit of collage and assemblage, as well as some digital art. Once you've taken fundamentals of art, you can move on to a couple different options, one of them being advanced studio personal voice. And in this class, you have a lot of freedom. Um, the class as a whole discusses a particular topic or theme, and then we spent some time looking at how various artists have represented that topic in different art forms. Then students have the um, freedom to go work individually, and they get to choose the medium that they want to work in for that topic, which makes for a very interesting studio time, as well as the critique at the end of the project um, to see what everybody else has done in, in the different types of art that they've made. Um, another option is drawing and painting, and this course covers um, basic drawing and painting techniques with an em emphasis on composition, value structure, texture, scale, and proportion. Um, some of the lessons include monochromatic painting, portraiture, fashion drawing, perspective, and abstract art. Um, a relatively new course to the curriculum is digital art. Um, Students work in Procreate using an iPad, and the lessons for this course are structured around the application of the elements of art and principles of design. Um, for the 3D side, we have Ceramics 1 and 2. Uh, Ceramics 1 covers the basics of working in clay, um, teaching students to use the different hand building techniques. Uh, projects range from utilitarian items like coffee cups and that kind of thing to decorative sculpture. Uh, Ceramics 2 it builds on the skills learned in Ceramics 1, but incorporates throwing on the wheel. Um, and there's an emphasis on lots of practice with that to really hone those skills of, of working um, with clay on the wheel. Uh, another 3D course is Introduction to Sculpture. Um, in this course, students learn to create sculptural art using sp a specific formula or process to make successful 3D art, which includes um, using things to support the concept, such as material choice, um, method of construction, texture, and tension. So those are, that's the kind of formula we use for each of the assignments in sculpture. Um, if you really have a love for art, but you don't really um, 
necessarily want to make your own art. We can um, offer art history. And in this, this course is um, basically starts with the um, impressionism going through postmodernism with um, an emphasis on contemporary artists at the end. So we cover all the major art movements and look at as many artists as we can um, and have lots of discussions about art and um, how different cultural and um, uh, world influences uh, affect how artists approach art making. Um, we also have a class uh, for, port, uh, for students that are going on to art schools, it's uh, portfolio design. And in this class, students build both um, a digital and a physical portfolio um, with an emphasis on really um, completing their, their artwork as a whole. Um, so if, if students need to work on life drawing or things like that to, to really beef up their portfolio so they're prepared for college, they can do that. And lastly, uh, for seniors who have kind of exhausted the courses that they would like to take in the visual arts department, I do offer independent art. Um, where students have the opportunity to kind of choose their path um, and we kind of collaborate together on different assignments, but they choose what, what art uh, materials they want to work in and what their focus is and, and they uh, come up with kind of a cohesive body of work from that class. Um, so now I'm going to turn you over to our other visual arts teacher, Paula Trout. Hi everyone, I'm Paula Trout and I teach sewing, photography, and yearbook. All of my classes are half year semester long courses. In introduction to sewing, you'll learn the basics from the machine sewing and hand sewing, including various stitches and seam finishes. You'll build a solid sewing foundation while you create a variety of small projects. In advanced sewing, you build on the skills that you learned in intro and you, the projects that you complete will in, be more involved, more complex and take longer to do. You'll leave the class knowing how to make home deck items like table runners, oven mitts, and aprons. In garment making, we will delve into the world of clothing. Um, you need your knowledge from both introduction and advanced sewing to build on. You'll learn how to take measurements, read a garment pattern, and a basic knowledge of how to create garments such as shirts, pants, and skirts from scratch. It's a double block period because garments are very time consuming to create. Independent sewing is a self-paced course available to anyone who has taken intro to sewing. Here you choose what projects you wish to create and I'm there to help you through it as you need it. Introduction to photography uses a DSLR camera to build basic skills in anyone who has an interest in photography but little to no experience. You learn about camera handling, composition, effective use of flight, file management, styles of photography, and how to examine images critically through unit critiques. We provide a DSLR camera, but if you have your own, you are welcome to use it. Um, in yearbook, it's designed to develop your skills in the production of end scene, which is GSAA's yearbook. You will explore journalism, photography, design, layout, and marketing in the course. It's student driven, start to finish. So kids choose the theme, the layout, everything, and they also market it and sell the books. We work as a team to create a co cohesive professional book that you can be proud of. Um, first semester focuses on theme selections, layouts, and color choices, developing the flavor of that year's book. Second semester will focus more on journalism, proofing, and design, and editing the book. Now I'm going to hand this over to Kathleen Hunnebuck. Hello, I'm Mrs. Han Kathleen Hunnebuck, the case manager for students with education plans. I coordinate services with sending districts to ensure that unique learning needs are met in the classroom. I also work with students to help them manage course assignments and help them develop essential life skills of time management, organization, and planning, which prepare students to meet not only the demands of our rigorous curriculum, but also ensure student success beyond high school in college or on the job. All students are welcome to come in for support. And now I'll pass it back to Brain, your friend. Hi, I'm Rain, your friend, and I will be helping you with all of your technology needs. Right now, I'm going to show you your course selection sheet we have created through Google Docs. This form will be sent out to all students who are new and returning to school. And it's fairly simple. You click on the link once it's sent to you via email. It'll give you some instructions at the top. It'll also give you Miss Karen's email. So if you have any questions about the courses or if you're selecting the right thing, you can always contact her via email. 
You're gonna put your name on this form so we know who it goes to. Any question that has a little red star is gonna be required. Um, otherwise you cannot move on or submit this course. You'll also notice where it says required courses for whatever your grade level might be. We are automatically enrolling you in those courses so you will not have to choose anything there. You will select your math classes based off, if you're a freshman, what you took in the eighth grade, um, and then any other grade level moving forward where you would be next. You will select health and PE if that is something that you still need to take to satisfy your graduation requirements. If you are looking to go to a college that looks for a language course, you would select that here. And then you'll get down to the arts choices. You can select a total of up to five credits in the arts. Uh, that's in dance, music, theater, or visual arts. You do not have to select something in every art that's offered. You can select just where your passion lies, or you can choose something new. And you will go through, you'll select those courses, um, sewing, photography, and then when you get down to the bottom, you'll notice that there is humanities electives. Uh, creative writing and some other things there. Uh, at the end, you will say whether or not you need a study hall. And then you will do a little bit of a survey as to which art is your first, second, third, and so on choice. That way we can make sure that you are getting the courses that you most want on your schedule. Um, and then you hit submit. That is it in a nutshell. I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to Mrs. Karen. So as you can Hi. see, we have great teachers and we have great courses to offer all students. Um, and there's a variety of choices. Uh, I want to tell you that it's important that you try to plan out your students' next four years. Um, if you're a freshman or um, three years if you're a sophomore, just to make sure that you're taking the required classes that you think you will need for the future. Um, one of the recommendations I always have is at least two years of a foreign language. So going in um, freshman year, if you're thinking about college, most of the colleges want at least two years of one language. Um, three sets you above and beyond. There are, there are a lot of courses to pick. Please make sure that you fill out at least the five electives because when we schedule over the spring and summer, we wanna make sure that we get those courses that students want. If you do not fill in enough electives, we will be putting you into classes that we think would be appropriate. So it's better to select more than not enough. Um, if we have questions over the um, spring or summer, we will contact you over courses that you have signed up for. Um, please do not select courses that you think your child would be eligible to take, especially in math. If you think your kid will be a geometry kid, please call us or send their transcripts in or their eighth grade transcripts in so that we can make sure that we have placed them in the right place. If you have any questions about any of the courses that we've talked about or listed on the sheets, you can reach out to any of the teachers. They're listed on our website or you can um, reach out to me as well uh, by phone or email. And um, that's it. That's our, our um, 50 cent tour of all our classes here at Granite State Arts Academy. As you can see, we're excited to meet all the new um, prospective students and welcome back the um, students that we already have. Hope everyone is safe and have a great day.